it's well documented here on YouTube why it's best to use physical lights such as area lights and spotlights in your key shot scenes. But sometimes a custom HDRI setup can get you the same result much faster. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make a custom HDRI lighting setup with three options for more realistic pins. As always, if you're looking for some ready to render key shot resources, make sure you head over to moment.co.uk where my team and I are building out a massive library of designer scenes and props to help you improve your visuals. I'll leave the link to moment.co.uk down in the description below. For now, let's start the tutorial. The product I'm using for today's tutorial is the Bowers & Wilkins Formation Duo. It's a beautiful speaker. I will note though, I have changed the body to gloss black, piano black, because I think it's gonna be easier for us to see what's happening in the HDRI editor with gloss black reflections. Now, most of the work we're gonna to do today is in the environment tab. I've brought the project window over to the left-hand side for this tutorial, but just bear in mind, if you're a beginner, this will all be on the right-hand side of your UI. Now, before we jump into the HDRI editor and start building this lighting setup, a couple of things to change first. In the lighting tab, I'll make sure that product mode is enabled, not basic. And then in the image tab, we could also make sure that we're in photographic mode as I have done a video on. But in this case, I'm gonna go with high contrast mode because we're building a high contrast render today with very bright highlights on the speaker. We'll now go back to the environment tab and do a couple of checks before we actually do the custom lighting setup. They're both on the size. So under transform, make sure the size of the environment is comfortably big enough to hold your product. In my case, I'm gonna go up to 10 meters for this speaker. And then also under ground shadows, I'm gonna increase the size of this up to 10 meters too. I don't see ground shadows in this composition, so it doesn't matter, but in your work, you will need to make sure that your ground and environment are big enough. Okay, we can now go into the HDRI editor, which is this tab here, and you'll see in the HDRI editor, it works in layers. You will always have a default layer, which is called background, and by default, that background is set to an image, which is startup.hdr, which is what you see in this rectangle. Straight off the bat, I'm gonna change this to a solid color, and I'm gonna change that color to black, essentially turning all the lights off in Keyshot, and giving us a clean canvas to start working with. Now, every light source we're gonna add in here is going to be done with a pin, and pins can be added on this toolbar here at the top. Now, there are a couple of rules that I follow when using HDRI pins. Number one is that you want to achieve the best result, i.e. communicating the form of your product in an attractive way with as few pins as possible. If you can do that with one pin, fantastic. If you need four pins, that's probably okay too. If you find yourself needing 50 pins, you've probably not been that efficient with your lighting unless you do have a very complex product form to communicate. Secondly, in the editor is we try to avoid having overlapping pins. Just think of that in a photography studio. Would you put one light in front of another? Probably not. So in the editor, we try to keep our pins separate with a gap between all of them. So the first pin we're gonna add in here is gonna be the backdrop pin. And I'm just gonna add in a regular pin for that which is the far left button on here. Now that will add in a circular pin by default, and this pin is gonna sit behind our product. Now in our case, we are gonna render the Bowers and Wilkins speaker on a black background, but this pin is going to give me a little edge of light all the way around so I can communicate the form of the product. You don't have to do this, especially if you're on a black background, but in this case, I think it works really well. Now the setting for this pin, I'm gonna go with rectangular. And then I'm gonna make sure that fall off is down at zero so I get perfectly sharp edges. Now on this note, we also need to change the resolution of this whole image, this whole HDRI here. And you can do that by clicking on the background layer. Now under the background layer, you've got resolution and under resolution, I'm gonna crank it all the way up to the top one, 10,000 by 5,000 pixels. And then the top right hand corner, I can click refresh. So as we add in pins, we're gonna make sure that the edges stay really sharp and the reflections that we get are also really sharp too. Now I've got this pin sat behind my product. I can go back to the environment settings and change the background to be a color and that solid color is black. I can then reposition this pin. I'm gonna go back to the editor and move it into place so I get a constant bleed of light around the product. I'm gonna only have a slither on the top. And then if I need to adjust the size, it's under the size dropdown. So I can increase the Y scale and the X scale if I need to, just to get that trim of light around the edge. Before we move on to the next light source, I'm just gonna do some organization and rename this pin to backdrop. 
Now the next pin we're going to add in is going to be replicating a softbox diffuser in a photography studio. So again, we'll go add pin and again, we'll change it to rectangle. Now, if you look at one of these lights in a studio, you'll note a couple of things. Typically, the corners are a little bit rounded, not going to a junction like this because the soft boxes are made of fabric. And secondly, you will have a brighter spot in the middle of the light fading out to the sides. So we're going to try and recreate that in Keyshot so we can get more realistic reflections on the product. To do this, we're going to increase the rounded corner for that pin, probably up to around 0 0.3, 0 0.2 for me. And then for the fall off, we're going to leave on there, but the mode we're going to change to circular. So this will keep perfectly sharp edges around that. But as I bring up the fall off, you'll see that it starts to fade out around the side of this pin, giving a hot spot in the middle. Now we can either move this pin around to reposition the highlight or use our set highlight feature to reposition that on the speaker. Now I'm happy with the position. I can start to change the size. I'm going to go up. And last thing to do with this pin is increase the brightness. I'm going to go up to eight to make that much brighter than the backdrop pin because this is a feature pin. This goes on the front side of the product. The next light source we're going to add is a gradient pin. And a gradient pin is also a really important tool to have on your toolbar, especially for glossy products. To add a gradient pin, you click the second button along, which is add gradient pin, and you'll see that it comes on as circular and very colorful. So the color of this gradient is down here. We've got the first pin that's in red. I'm gonna change that to white. And the second one over here that's blue, I'm gonna change that to white also. Now I'm gonna again go with a rectangular pin in this case, which gives me a left to right gradient on this pin. And I'm gonna turn the fall off in this case all the way down to zero. So get my sharp edges coming back. So looking at how this gradient pin works, you have your color along the bottom, we're going white to white, and then the opacity at the top where we're going from white to black. So on the brightest side, I'm gonna click on that pin and I'm gonna turn the brightness all the way up to eight, which is what we used for our pin before. At the bottom though, I'm not gonna have it completely dark. So I'm gonna leave the brightness at one and at the bottom, so where it's faded out, I'm not gonna have it at zero opacity. I'm instead gonna have it probably about 0.1 or 0.2, so that it doesn't go to complete black over the other side. Again, I can now move this into place, either with the set highlight feature or just moving my pin around. That looks about right to me. Now for the last pin we add, we're gonna take a more professional approach. You don't have to use this, but if you're looking for that extra 5% on your visuals and your reflections, this might be the right route for you. So as I've discussed, lights in photography studios aren't normally solid colors. Moving on from what we did with the softbox, they actually have creases and lots of variation in them across that diffuser. Now that's very difficult to replicate in Keyshot without an external resource. Will Gibbons produced a fantastic video on how to use assets from Grayscale Gorilla to create that effect on area lights. I watched that video, I loved it. I got the assets from Grayscale Gorilla and we started using that workflow. I then found out that we could use those in the HDRI editor too. So if I bring up my texture library where I've loaded these assets, you'll see that you've got these scans of photography lights with accurate creases and reflections and luminosity on there. And the one I'm gonna use for this top pin is this circular softbox here. They're .exr files, which are high dynamic range, and I can simply click and drag that into the editor. Now, even though this is an image we're dragging into the editor, it works pretty much like a normal pin. I can drag it around, I can use a set highlight feature. And in this case, I'm gonna find that final position for this pin, which is gonna be more about my overhead light, trying to pick up more of that top contour, Again, trying not to overlap other pins. And then with these, I found that you have to juice the brightness quite a lot. They come in quite dark. So for this, I'm gonna try, I'll try brightness eight, see how that works. That's probably about right actually. And then put it in its final position. So we have got a little bit of pin overlap here on the editor, but because both these are so bright, you don't really see a difference at the back. And we get this finished lighting setup. Now, just to show you as well, we do have a piano black finish for the product here. But if I was to double click on that and start increasing the roughness of that paint, the setup will still hold. So actually sometimes it's wise to do your lighting setup for the gloss version of the product because it works for the gloss, it will probably work for the more rough version too. 
So there you go, start to finish making a custom HDRI lighting setup with three different methods for bringing in pins. I'm really happy with the outcome and hopefully you've learned something on the way. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.